Let's see some more information about um, ISO 27002. I have explained what um, this standard is, namely a guidance standard designed to be used by companies, by organizations of all types and sizes as a reference for determining and for implementing information security, cybersecurity and privacy controls. This is not the first edition of this standard, it is the third one. The first edition of ISO 27002 was published in 2005. Then the standard was uh, revised and a new edition came out in 2013. Today, as I'm creating this online course, the third edition of the standard has not been published yet. I am actually using the final draft of the international standard, but it is expected that in the first part of 2022, we will have the new edition of ISO 27002 published. If you are familiar with the previous edition of the standard, the one from 2013, then you will see that there are some changes, some new uh, controls have been introduced, some uh, of the uh, controls in the previous edition have been merged, some of them have been um, eliminated. Instead of having 114 security controls divided into 14 categories, this is what we had in the 2013 edition of the standard, now we only have 93 controls divided into four categories. This uh, process of revising standards periodically is a normal one. It is intended to ensure that the standards remain up to date and that they follow the latest developments. What is the purpose of this standard? As I said, it can be used in the context of an information security management system according to ISO 27001. It can also be used by an organization that is not necessarily looking to implement an ISMS, but only wants to apply some information security controls based on um, internationally recognized best practices. And also this standard can serve as a starting point for a company that wants to develop its own information security guidelines. About the structure of ISO 27002, we have four categories of controls, organizational controls, there are 37 of them, people controls 8, physical controls 14, and uh, technological controls 34. A total of 93 controls, as I said, those categories are also referred to as themes. Each security control is associated with a number of attributes, as you can see in this table. By type, a control can be preventive, meaning that the control acts before a threat occurs. It can be a detective control that acts when a threat occurs, or it can be a corrective control that acts after a threat occurs. A security control can be only preventive or detective or corrective, or it can have at the same time multiple attributes associated with its uh, type. To give you an example, we have a control that refers to the disciplinary process that should exist and that should be applied in case an employee commits a violation of a security policies, policy. This is, of course, a corrective control, but it is at the same time a preventive control because the disciplinary process should act as a deterrent to prevent personnel from violating the company's uh, policies and procedures. The next category of attributes, information security properties, each control is intended to preserve one or more characteristics of uh, information security, meaning confidentiality, integrity and availability. Cybersecurity concepts is another uh, category where we have five attributes, identify, protect, detect, respond and recover. Operational capabilities attributes are more, 15 exactly, governance, asset management, information protection, human resource security, physical security, system and network security, application security, secure configuration, identity and access management, threat and vulnerability management, continuity, supplier relationship security, legal and compliance, information security event management, and information security assurance. And finally, 
the last category of attributes security domains will uh, categorize controls from the perspective of information security fields expertise services and products and the attributes here are governance and ecosystem protection defense and resilience so for each of the 93 controls when i will presenting a control i will also give you the attributes we have a table at the end of the standard table a1 uh, this is a matrix of controls and attribute values you have there all the controls in iso 27002 and the associated attributes for each one of them the table i have attached uh, as a supplementary resource to this video so you can download it the idea with those attributes is that you can filter the controls based on the attributes for example you can filter to see which security controls are aimed to preserve the integrity of information or um, which controls are let's say preventive controls it should be noted that uh, not all controls apply to all organizations there are companies with no software development uh, for example, so the controls that refer to software development do not apply in their case. Other companies do not use cryptography, they do not generate cryptographic keys, so the respective controls do not apply. At the same time, it is perfectly acceptable for an organization uh, to develop and to apply supplementary controls uh, to those in the standard if the company considers that uh, the ones in ISO 27002 are not sufficient for its needs. Good. So I think this is enough with the introductive part. From the next video, we will begin discussing the security controls in ISO 27002 and I will follow the structure of the standard, meaning that we will begin with the organizational controls. This is the first theme. We have 37 controls in this category and the first of them is called policies for information security.